The stock market has just opened and it looks fairly positive right across the board. Now our focus is going to be on Dollar General, a company that is trading right there towards its 52 week low down 50% from its 52 week high and in fact just year to date down around 37%. So should we capitalize on this drop? Is it a market overreaction? Well, we're going to find out today. And the first thing we want to understand is how they reported just a couple of weeks ago. And we can see from a lease of their earnings, the shares of the company was down around 25%. Now, a few reasons why this happened to be, well, as we can see, they missed on both their top line as well as bottom line. And they've essentially blamed the main reason of this being on low income consumers who they believe are under some real financial pressure and therefore has affected their numbers right across the board and no surprises here they do need to do a lot of work to improve their stores as well as better manage their inventory so what do the numbers show is it just that or is there any more information well unfortunately there is a bit of more information which isn't good news they have lowered their expectations now for the full year 2024 they're anticipating one to 1.6 percent growth as we always say you ideally want to be hitting three to four percent just to keep up in line with inflation now this is lower than what they had already anticipated they expected two to 2.7 so they've lowered their revenue and on top of that they have lowered their earnings per share around 550 to 620 for the full year as opposed to as what we can see here 680 to 755 so a lowering of eps a lowering of revenue and in terms of looking at how they performed well they did have quite a significant eps miss 170 versus 179 revenue as well that concludes their double miss on top of that when we do look at their bottom line net income comparing to the same quarter last year they reported 374 million and as we can see last year it was significantly more sitting at 469 so something just to bear in mind but what we can see here as we mentioned the ceo does believe a lot of this has come down to the customer who they do believe are right now facing a very challenging environment although we can in fact see that he has acknowledged which is good that the company itself does need to do more rather than essentially blaming the consumers who maybe you could argue is one of the reasons for this drop but overall when we have looked at other earnings from other companies the message isn't very similar we do look at earnings reports and we can see the overall market based on the increases to guidance that maybe perhaps the consumer in this case isn't to blame now let's just get back to the historical information of dollar general now as we mentioned down significantly year to date and over the last 10 years if you have been a shareholder you would be up only 36 percent not great severely as well underperforming the smp and when we take a look at the forward pe sits at just above 14 they do also pay a dividend fairly nice yield 2.84 percent forward looking and we also get a double buy rating seeking alpha wall street although we do note a sell rating from quant now in terms of how this company actually looks from the metrics perspective well, first thing to note, they do have a dividend safety score of 50, borderline safe. So we will take a look and understand why that seems to be the case. For those wanting to understand what this ultimately means, well, first thing we have to point out was it was just downgraded a couple of weeks ago. And we can see here that ultimately there is a moderate risk of a dividend cut over the full economic cycle. Now, in terms of how they performed in the last recession, so a few key metrics, this is the Great Recession 0709. They actually cut the dividend, not a good sign, but they did have above average growth, plus 3.5% with the S&P during the same time coming in at negative 12. Now, we are waiting for a dividend increase, as we can see here. We haven't got one yet since last year, but over the last five years, as well as the last 20 years, they have been increasing those dividends at a very strong double digit rate, something ultimately we do love to see on this channel as dividend growth investors. And they have been increasing those dividends for the last eight years on a consecutive basis. Now, if you're new to this channel, we do typically look at dividend yield theory. It does state a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So we have one severe undervaluation signal here, another severe undervaluation signal with the forward P at 14, lower than the five year average of 20.4. So you could argue a double severe undervaluation signal, a yield that is the highest offered to shareholders over the last five years and a forward PE, which has been the lowest over the last five as well. 
We also note, in fact, a triple undervaluation signal as consumer staples, the sector itself is trading higher at 18.4. Now let's get to the free cash flow power. We want to ultimately see below 40% for consumer retailers. It has been below that for the last 10 years for the majority of the period, although we note the last two years very, very high. Now what this means, we would indicate a triple digit as a red flag indicator. Now why that's the case, it ultimately tells us management have paid out more in dividends in 2023 than they generated in free cash flow. Positive to take, it has reduced in 2024 and estimated to reduce over the next 12 months as we can see the 47%. So hopefully we do get a nice double digit increase for this year. We also want to point out this is one of the reasons why we tend to ignore the earnings data, not something you would have identified by purely looking at this information. And we also note this is susceptible to manipulation by Mandarin through accounting. Now, in terms of the free cash flow per share, what we do note here, pretty much stagnant from 2015 to 2024, very little movement, although we do see a lot of inconsistency on a year on year basis. What we can point out, though, over the next 12 months, anticipated to nearly double to $5.04. Again, just bear in mind a bit of inconsistency on a year on year basis. Then we get to sales growth, as always, 3 to 7%. Now, they have pretty much hit that other than 2022 and 2024. In fact, we do see some very strong numbers like 2021. Just again, one thing that we have highlighted, we always like to just remind you, whether it's your dividends, whether it's your salary, whether it's other income producing assets, or purely just metrics that you look at for companies, you want to see numbers that are at least keeping up in line with inflation at a very bare minimum. So what we note for 22 and 24, they have been unable to do that. But I guess you could zoom out and you could identify here that over the last 10 years, they have more than doubled their top line. Hopefully they can continue that trend moving forward. Then we like to draw your attention to share buybacks. As always, we love this return excess cash. They've done quite a good job over the longer term. As we can see, pretty consistently small share buybacks on a year on year basis. Very nice to note, especially if they can continue not just the share buybacks, but also offering those double digit increases to the dividend. And ROIC, give us 10% or more. That's what we want to see. It has been decreasing. So that is one thing that we would just flag. We do want it to be around that 10% to give us that faith that ultimately management can effectively allocate their capital. Not something we have seen over the last year. In fact, on a trailing 12 month basis, it has started to reduce. Again, just bear that in mind, maybe something to consider when we do come to our margin of safety. Then operating margin, 10% or more, straddling around that on a year on year basis. But we have noted over the last few years, decreasing margins 5% on the trading to a month. Again, this is something very key to understand from this company. Ultimately, they are struggling to increase their top line revenue and in a way to bring back customers to their stores, increasing essentially their sales. They may start to decrease their margins, something that we have seen here and will ultimately show up when we look at their bottom line net income, whether it's for this year or moving forwards. So do factor that in. As always, realistically, high quality companies, they do give us an increase to their top line as as well as operating efficiency with those increasing margins. Free cash flow margin as well hasn't looked too bad over longer term until we get to the last two years. The only positive here is that it has increased on a trading 12 month basis. So hopefully they can maintain around that five to six point that we want to see for consumer retailers. Then we get to the net debt to EBITDA. Below three is what we want to see, 3.25 in 24. Now remember, again, for those that are maybe new to this metric, it does highlight the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of that debt net of cash on hand. Has been above that nearly every single year, expected to go higher over the next 12 months, which is one of the reasons why we did see that borderline safe score to the dividend safety. So again, quite a few different things here just to factor in before you do decide to execute on this stock and before you do come up with that golden number to use as your margin of safety. Now, we also want to let you know we have released our latest weekly article. If you want access to this or any others, you can click on that pinned comment below where you can sign up and read straight away. You will also be able to get access to the 25 undervalued stocks for your consideration for the month of September, where we also talk about each one that sits within our own portfolio. Now, we take a look at some insider movement. Now, 0.49 in terms of percentage ownership. Now, 1.43 million worth of sales by the insiders over the last 12 months. However, we do note a little bit of buying during the same time period. And in fact, the more recent Q3 data we have, we do notice insider buying 121,000. Previous quarter, we actually see the selling of 1.43 million. As always, insider buying, we do believe to be a very bullish signal as management do buy because they believe the share price will go up. 
And as we can see here, in fact, the director has bought in two tranches just over the last few weeks. We can see a 500 as well as a 1,000 shares, totaling to around 120,000. So a good sign. It does look like they do believe this is towards the bottom. And as insiders, they will have a lot more information to their hand rather than what we will have in terms of the analysis today. Then we look at institutional ownership, very high in terms of what we have seen on the channel, 92%, around 3 billion worth of sales over the last year, pretty much double over the same time period in fact, so institutions clearly like this company, however we do note over the more recent quarter, Q2 a little bit more selling than buying, previous two quarters, in fact three quarters, we do note the opposite, more buying than selling. Remember though, always do your own due diligence, never copy what insiders or essentially institutions do. Now let's get to some of the analysis in terms of the income and balance sheet. First thing to note, as we saw, their top line has been increasing fairly consistently over the period, although we do see it a few years over the more recent below inflation, going from that double position, as we said, 19 billion to 39 in 2024. What we wanna to draw to your attention here though is the bottom line, if it follows the same trend, well, graphically, we do see it peak in 2021. Since then, it has been downward trending, so not too great. Ideally, we want to see consistent increases. 1 billion in 2015, 1.7 in 2024. And as we can see here, coming down from the 2021 position on a year-on-year -year basis. So something just to bear in mind. And on a trailing 12-month, we can see it coming down as well. So lots of different factors, as we've already mentioned, to consider as an investor who is considering this in their portfolio. In terms of a quick health check, total cash versus total debt, 580 million of cash in 2015, 1.2 billion in the latest report. So it has doubled, as we can see here, although very inconsistent again on a year-on-year -year basis. And as always, let's compare that with that total debt numerically and directionally. And what we can see here, pretty rapid increase, 2.7 billion in 2015, 18.2 in the latest report as we can see as well graphically very rapid increase one of the reasons why we did see that borderline safe score which was also a downgrade just in this year now in terms of their analysis expectations versus how they've performed well over the last four quarters they have in fact beat 75 percent three of the four although the more recent quarter as we already ran through today was a miss and moving forwards over the next two quarters double digit decrease to the EPS anticipated although if they do hit that January 2026 estimate the forward P will come down to 12.7 again will depend whether or not you do see them hitting that target given they did just miss the recent one blaming essentially consumer weakening environment then getting to the gradings well valuation B plus we can see here 14.3 on the PE versus 18 of the sector. So nice to note you are paying a discount $4 general of 21% against others that are trading in this sector. When we do look at other methods as well, we can see pretty much a very similar theme throughout, which is why they do get that B plus grating. Then we take a look at their growth. Well, they get an F, so not really a great start here. Revenue year on year, 2.24. Marginally low in the sector median of 2.53. 4% moving forwards, as we can see the sector at 3.31, although this has now been downgraded as we saw to 1% to 2%. And then when we finally take a look at the earnings per share, not something you really want to see over the next five years. They're anticipating negative 1% drop to the, to the earnings per share, where we see the sector as a whole 7.9. So it does explain that F rating. So something again, just to factor in. Then we look at their profitability, they do get a B plus. Now in terms of the margin, 30% gross margin, a little bit lower than the sector of 36. Bottom line as well, a little bit lower, 3.6 versus the median of 4.4. And ultimately the thing that does help this metric here, cash from operations, 3.3 billion versus the 767 from the sector median. Now a quick conclusion for this part of the analysis, a double buy with the sell from quant, B plus on valuation and F on growth with a B plus on that profitability. Now let's take a quick look at how they performed against others in the industry. We have Dollar Tree, we have Careful, we have BJ's Wholesale, as well as a few others. Now over the last year, they are down negative 29%, but as we always do, we're not just looking at them in isolation. We wanna see the wider market, and in fact, four of the six have had negative returns, so you could argue this industry as a whole has suffered just over the last 12 months. And then when we look over the last five years, negative 43%, again, quite a significant number with that negative negative performance. So again, just understand this whole sector hasn't been the greatest over the period. 
When we look over the last 10 years, though, we do know not too bad 51%, but again, not something you want from an investment over a 10-year period. Remember, though, they could perform a lot better over the next 10, as well as a lot worse, as past performance is not an indicator of the future. As always, if you do enjoy the content values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now our intrinsic value of $98, how we got to this, let's run it through the model. Now the first one is the multiples valuation where we have three companies in a similar sector and size, average P multiplied by the EPS of DG to get that intrinsic value of $97, our first undervaluation signal. Do remember though, none of these we're looking at in isolation. Then we have the dividend discount model, very nice growth as we mentioned, 15.6% over the last few years. We're going with 6% moving forwards, a little bit more conservative than what we have seen, especially over the more recent years. That does give us another undervaluation signal, so we are 2 for 0 right now. Then we get to the DCF model, where we have the free cash flow year on year. Average growth over the last 10 years at 10%, we've gone pretty much the same forward looking, so consistent with how they've historically performed. Then with the discount rate at 8%, we have the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get the actual value, divide by the shares outstanding, and as we can see, our first overvaluation signal. So one overvaluation, two undervaluation, that is how we get the average of the three models at $98. And as always, you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, running your own numbers, whether it's for this company or any other. Now, margin of safety, let's jump into that. 10% as always, three criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. If you believe that, look, a buy at $88.40. Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And today you could argue you're getting a 15% margin of safety. Now with that, Wall Street do see around 25% upside. Their price target of $106 is a little bit higher than our calculated intrinsic value. And for those that do want to see a larger MOS, we're at 20% around $78.58, which was where we saw this company not too long ago at its 52-week low. For those at 25%, around 74. So in today's episode, 15% MOS, 25% upside from Wall Street. Do give us your thoughts below. Is this one you've been adding as it did do that significant drop post earnings? Maybe it's on your watch list or understandably, maybe this is one that you are not looking to consider as there were a few red flag indicators just to consider. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, smash that like button. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below. And as always, come and join us in the Patreon where we do run through our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.